today's agenda. Got the suitcase up in the today's agenda. Got the suitcase up in the sink. Today's agenda. Got the suitcase up in the central. Go to room one twelve. Tell them Blanco Central. Today's agenda, got the suitcase up in the central, go to room 112, tell them Blanco Central. For the strangeness of no money exchanges, I got them kids of ranges to leave the niggas names. I see no changes, I wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living, should I blast myself? I'm tired of being poor and even worse than black, my stomach hurts, so I'm looking for a place to snack. Cops give a damn about a Negro, pull the trigger, kill a nigga, he's a hero. Give him back to the kids who the hell cares, one less ugly mouth on the welfare. Curse ship and don't let them do the brothers, give them guns, step back, watch them kill each other. It's time to fight back, that's what Huey said, two shots in the dark, now Huey's dead, I got love for my brothers. But we can never go nowhere unless we share with each other. We gotta start Make it changes. Let me see me as a brother set of two distant strangers. And that's how it's supposed to be. I can never take a brother if he's close to me. I let it go back to when we played as kids, but things change. And that's the way it is. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. The Rangers like to see his joy. Let's get picture paragraphs unloaded. Wise words being quoted. People weakness in the rap game is sold. Bow down, pray to God. Open eyes, listen. See, I'm niggas coming from me from my diamonds when they kiss. I pay attention with some peace, Father. I'm a ghost in these killing fields. Here, America, I'm through my ghost. Who's gonna hear inside the solitary mind of a madman? Screams in the dark. He who looks in the mirror, see me bleed. I tell them, my hate, let it break. Complain, and it's such a pity. I'm not gonna never stop the aim. Some say the game is all corrupt. The fuck that shit starts. Niggas are blocking it from first out to shoot. Plus, Mama told me never stop. Tell us enough. Fuck the world if they can't adjust. It's just a small hell, Mary. Come with me, tell me what to see. Na 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 na. It was all a dream. 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 You got another one. Is ready for this one? Okay. Now it's your turn. Sing along. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Storm Pepper Heavy D up in the limousine. And the <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Word Man, and this is the Word. Welcome to another show. Make some noise in here, man. What's up? We got a bunch of ghosts in here. What is this? Get the party started, baby. All right. All right, showtime. I get running out. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. It's good to hear. Let me just adjust myself a little bit. Gotta get ready. Oh. Oh. You seem nervous. <laughs> yeah, you should be scared. Beware of the Ides of March. Beware of the Ides of March. Anybody know what the Ides of March are? The 15th of March. Yeah. Uh, it's 15th of March, baby. Beware the Ides of March. I'm a little nervous. A little bit, not too much. Because um, I just said some bad words. So now that I said some bad words, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not worried about you guys who are here. Everybody who's here is here, but um, now that I said some bad words, folks who are not here are going to be very upset. 
and they're going to have a lot to say, and then, you know, they're going to go to the board meeting on Monday, and I won't have a job on Tuesday. So I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Folks aren't nervous. Listen, for real, folks are very nervous coming up here. You know, this I, I, I had planned um, four people to be at the show performing, and now we're down to two. It's me and my brother, Alice Obo, over there. Make some nice Alice Obo, please. Give me a white light, clear light. Make some noise for Wissam Sharifuddin. Everybody knows Wissam Sharifuddin. <laughs> Let's change the color. All right. Yeah, people get nervous up here because I, you know, it's um. It's scary to be up here, I think, for a lot of people. Because, like, you know, uh, we get judged very quickly and a lot of things are assumed. And um, usually it's people, again, who are not here. It's people who didn't show up or are gonna, who might be very upset. And um, we got we to take that heat. But I think, you know, we've done something collectively, and this doesn't come just to me. This is something we've all done together. Uh, I think so far we have made this a happy space and a safe space and a place where um, we can have fun and be... Uh, Comfortable with with one another, and that's what I really hope we we we've managed to do. I got a couple of announcements to make, and then uh, a few things to get started and talk about. The first one is that um, I want to remind those of you who are uh, new here, because we have we have some some new folks here, first time at the Dearborn Open Mic. This show runs uh, every third Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. Third Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. here at the Arab American National Museum. However, next month. Next month for April, uh, the show will uh, actually start at six in front of instead of seven. The reason being that uh, it's going to be Ramadan, and we want folks to have some time to you know get home and, and get their food and get together with their families. So we'll be starting at six. The other thing is, uh, unlike today's show where we started with some music and some bad words, which I'll, I'll be addressing in a moment, um, there will be no music and no bad words at the next show. Actually, we're uh, kind of going to do an Islamic theme. So we're going to do uh, talent inspired by the Islamic faith. So we hope you guys can all come out there. It's also toward the end of Ramadan. I think it's actually the week of the Eid. So uh, I'm hoping as many of you can come on out and, and, and support us. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, I want to, let me see, talk about one other thing. Uh, which is, yeah, I do want to address this, this issue of bad words. You know, gangster rap is, as, mar as far as I'm concerned, modern gospel. Uh, especially at, at its peak, what they call the golden age of gangster rap, which was in the 80s and 90s, which, when actual gangsters were rapping. Uh, not professionals, not entertainers, not artists. No, these were, these were literally folks who went out and were lived, lived that life and then came back and said, let me tell you about my day. And that's, that's what those songs were. And, of course, they used the language of their, of their uh, time and of their era. That's just the language that, that they, that was how they talked. That was the way they lived. Um, and so I think as an integrity to that, uh, to that art and to that tradition, it's very important to say the words that they said the way they said them because that's language, right? That is their language. Um, but, man, bad words. I don't... Okay, I want to try some. Can we try some? Put into your mind the worst word you can think of. In your mind, worst word you can think of. Okay? And then I'm going to count to three. I'm going to count to three, and if you dare, I want you to whisper this word to yourself. Okay? If I'm going down, you're all going down. So I want you to whisper this word to yourself <laughs> on the count of three. One, two, three. When I was growing up, um, there were, of course there were words you couldn't say, and if we did say them, we got in a lot of trouble. Uh, one of them was uh, the N word, which, by the way, is um, is the most hideous word in the English language. And uh, I came, I came across that. You know, I, I came I, when I first came across that word. Of course, it was in music, so it seemed very normal. It was very common. But etymologically, that word is um, is a heinous word. It really is. It's, it's the only word in the English language of all the slurs in the English language. It's the only one that actually means less than human. So, for example, if you take a word like Arab, 
Okay, that's a slur, right? You call somebody an Arab. An Arab means, as an insult, you know, a, a backward, dirty, um, ignorant person, right? Take another word. Let's say, uh, let's take chink. That's a, that's a, that's a slur for, um, for Asians, Asian Americans. That means, you know, in, as, as a definition of the insult, um, uh, sneaky, um, noodle-eating, uh, chopstick-holding person. The N-word is the only slur that means less than human. It's the only one that means you lack, you, you are of subhuman quality. And that is a hideous word, it really is. It's the ugliest one we have. There is, I can't think of another one. I remember the first time I said that word. I was 10 years old. We were at a wedding. And listen, so I'm 10 years old. You guys know that. So I'm obviously in a tux that doesn't fit. I got a flamingo for a bow tie or whatever. You know how they dress us. And we're all dancing, and I'm dancing, I remember. And I remember um, I was moving something like this. And then I, like, turned around. No, I didn't turn that way. I literally turned this way. I turned around like this, and I said it. I said the word. And I looked up, and my father was standing literally right over me like this. And he looked down at me. And look, my father, my, my, my father doesn't have to talk. He gives me a look. His eyes, he does it with his eyes. And I'm, you know. And he gave me a look. And look, usually when I do something bad, he gives me a look. And um, it's, basically the, the, the look is, you know, don't do that. But I, I'm telling you, I was 10 years old and I still remember this. The look he gave me when he looked at me that moment said more than that. There was danger in his eyes. He was, it was like what you just said is dangerous. And I never forgot that. There was another word uh, we, we used to say a lot. It was called the F word. It was the F word. Uh, not, not that F word. Um, no, not, not, not fuck. Not, the, not that F word. Uh, it was faggot. We used to call everybody a faggot. Now, when I was growing up, you used to say faggot. It didn't mean, it just, you just said it. It didn't, um, we didn't know what it meant. I just remember, if you don't like somebody, it's what you call them. It's just, yeah, you know, playing basketball, a guy, you know, misses a point. You know, you call him faggot. I didn't know what that word meant until I went to college. And in college, actually, I remember taking a course, and they were talking about the history of that word. And the word faggot non-slur, the word itself, um, if I remember correctly, means um, wood. And the word comes from uh, burning people alive. Because that's what they did to these people. They would burn them alive. And basically what that slur meant was, you're the stuff we use to feed fire. And when I learned that, I said, I'm never, I'm never using that word again. I never did. I never, it just... That's horrible. But those are not the worst words. I'll tell you what the worst word is. I'll tell you the, the, most, the baddest word there is. The most bad word in the English language is hate. And I'll tell you why I think that. My mom um, is a, uh, was an Islamic school teacher, and she used to teach half the Quran. She had this, the, one, the one thing that would always get her is when we read Surah Al-Fatiha, you know, some people say, well, my mom would throw tantrums. It's correct, everybody. One time, uh, I don't know what I was saying. I don't, I, she made food, and I don't remember what it was. So just for example, sake, I'm going to say broccoli. And I said, I hate broccoli. She said, don't say hate. Say, don't like. So, Mom, I hate school. Don't say hate. Say, don't like. Who's what stood out to that about me? Normally, when I said bad words, like if I said shit or something, she'd be like, hey, 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 you know, whatever. Something to interrupt the flow and stop me from saying that. But when I said hate, she would not only stop me, don't say hate, say don't like. And then she'd make me go back and fix it. 
It wasn't bad enough to say it. It's not just that I'm not allowed to say it. I have to go back and revise it. I can't think that. I'm not allowed to have that thought of hate. Say don't like, but don't say hate. I didn't understand at the time, really. I had no idea why she said that or why she insisted on it. I didn't find out, actually, until I went to college. In college, I read a book um, that I'm going to talk to you about in a second. Before I do, actually, I just remembered something. There's uh, one other thing I wanted to address. Um, after the show last time, in February, I was walking out, and somebody made an observation that, uh, that came to mind for me. It, was really, uh, it, caught, it caught my ear. I forgot who it was. Maybe, maybe they're here. I'm not sure. But uh, somebody said, you know, last month's theme was love. He talked about love. And you went up here, and for all the talk that you did about um, love and romance and relationships, you never mentioned your beautiful girl. If you remember from January, from the very first show, I had talked to you that uh, I was in love with a beautiful girl. You said you never mentioned her. Why? And I thought about that, and I was like, why didn't I mention her? Um, so I thought I'd address that today. The reason I didn't mention her is because uh, she and I don't celebrate uh, Valentine's Day. It's kind of a thing. We don't like that day, so we don't celebrate it. So February didn't really ring a bell for me. Uh, our special day, we picked our own. Basically, we both don't like Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day so we picked our own. Uh, our special day is in March, actually. I can't tell you what day it is. It's a secret. But it's a day in March, and uh, we celebrate that together. So, um, I brought her up today. We're, uh, we're really something, I'm telling you. We are uh, what uh, Shakespeare called star-crossed lovers. In Romeo and Juliet. You know, uh, I don't know why we do that, actually. Why we teach Romeo and Juliet the way we do. We call it a love story. Romeo and Juliet's a love story. But anybody who reads that book or has watched that play knows it's... It's a stupid love story. It doesn't make any sense. Even a 14-year-old, I mean, I teach it now, and I've taught it for several years, of course, in high school. And high schoolers, even when they read Romeo and Juliet, even they realize this story doesn't make any sense. What's, what's with the love story? Romeo and Juliet is not a love story. It's a hate story. It's a story about hate. Two households, both alike. I love Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. He tells you what you need to know. You can't miss a word in Shakespeare. Two households, both alike. That's very important. The Montagues and the Capulets are alike. It's very important to know that. Because they're feuding from ancient grudge, breeds ancient mutiny, from a long time ago. They don't even know why they're fighting anymore. They just know they're fighting. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, two star-crossed lovers come along, right? And uh, you guys know the story, I guess, but um, just briefly, basically, two families were feuding and fighting all the time. Uh, one family, the Capulets, and the other, the Montagues. Turns out the Montagues' son sees and falls in love with the Capulet daughter, but they can't be together because their families are always fighting. And a lot of stuff happens. A lot of stuff happens to the teenagers. Teenagers fight. Teenagers a uh, uh, party, they, they um, end up feuding, they end up killing each other, and they end up killing themselves, of course, in the end. And we say, oh, that's a love story. It's not a love story. First of all, that story's not even about the teenagers. It's about the adults. It's a story about the adults. How do you know that? In literature and theater, well, it's because it's theater, in literature in general, you know who the story is addressing when you get to the end. And in the end of Romeo and Juliet, Romeo and Juliet and all the teenagers are dead. Tybalt's dead. Mercutio's dead. Romeo and Juliet are dead. And all that's left is the adults. Montague and Catherine. And then they make peace. In other words, the message is for the adults. They're the ones who are supposed to learn the lesson, which is, look what you're teaching your kids. That hate goes on and on and on. Ancient grudge. And you just carry it. You forget why you're even fighting. And it poisons our kids. It keeps going. 
Romeo and Juliet is a hate story. I'll show you another hate story. I brought one of my friends here. This is the Iliad of Homer. I read this in college. I read it after college because they didn't teach this. I didn't read this in middle school or high school or college. I had to leave college to find out this is something I should be reading, which blows my mind because this book is the single greatest work of, of the Western tradition in any language. You know, the Greeks considered us, they would consider their citizens educated, educated, civilized members of society. Just if they had studied just this book, they had studied just this book, the Iliad. You want to talk about bad words? I'll give you some bad words. Actually, let me give you some good words. Let's talk about good words for a second. There are words, when they're said, they stop you dead in your tracks. One I can think of is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imagine if somebody's coming up to you and they want to fight you, they get in your face, so they're like, oh, I do that, I do that, they get in your face, you're there. and imagine if you just stood still and you said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Somebody's getting at you, you're in traffic. Imagine you're in traffic, somebody pulls over, you know, and they roll down their window and they're swearing at you, you just roll in, you just go, you look at, you know, you're driving in your car, you look at it, you go, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Stop them there. Another word I really like is this one. It comes from a, from a poem. What? What? We garden in gear de gum teod kinidinga. That's Beowulf. Oldest poem in the English language. I love kinidinga. What? Where Gardena in Gear de Gom stay at Kinininga. Kinininga is, is as close as you can get to saying Cunnilingus without getting in trouble. Stay at Kinininga, I'm going wrong. Hello. You know how the Iliad starts? Many. Not many. Actually, it's Greek. You know what the word is? Great. Rage. The rage of Achilles. Those are the first words of the Iliad. Starts with rage. What happens when you rage? This is a book about rage. Guy's pissed. Why is he mad? Why is he pissed? Same reason we're all pissed. Somebody stole this beautiful girl. His boss, the general of the army, took his girl. He said, fine, you took my girl, I'm not fighting. He's the greatest warrior. His name is Achilles. The army needs him. He's the champion. He says, I'm sitting this one out. Goes and sits on a hill. He says, you take my girl, I'm not going to fight. Let everybody die. You know something? I don't know, I don't know what people see. You know, when I look at this, I don't, I don't know what a book is, but here's what, to me, this is not a book. This is a door. And I open this door. Sorry, I'm trying to manage this enormous thing. I open this door. And these are all, it's a path. It's like a road. And I follow the road. I just follow this road. And the question is, how far do you want to go? And if you're reading the right books, and I wish we taught more of them in school, if you're reading the right books, you get nervous on these roads. They start to say things to you. They start to do things. To me, it's a door. You open the door. How far do you go? A lot of people who read fiction stop before they get to the 30%. So if you take a look at this book, for example. There we go. You got this book here. This is about 30%. Most of us stop here because in any work of fiction, nothing happens the first 30%. But if you keep going, you get to the most important thing. Here's the most important thing. Everybody's feuding. Everybody hates each other. Everybody's mad. And then finally, the captain. The captain makes a decision. Guys, this book is, ne- I mean, the murder and the violence in this book is, is incredible. It's really hard to read. But then you get to this point, right around the maybe 40% mark, and he says this. 
And Agamemnon, the lord of men, consented quickly. That's no lie, old man, a full account you give of all my acts of madness. Mad, blind I was, not even I would deny it. Why, look, that man is worth an entire army. The fighter Zeus holds dear with all his heart, how he exalts him now and mauls Achaea's forces. But since I was blinded, lost in my own inhuman rage, now at last I am bent on setting things to rights. I'll give a priceless ransom paid for friendship. He says, I'm sorry. He just says, I'm sorry. He says, look, I've been a jerk. I took your girl. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. He says that at the 40% mark. That's when he admitted he was wrong. This is what had to happen before anybody could stop the rage. And this is all that was left. Because everybody's dead. Hate is the ugliest word in the language. I came up here and I sang about gangster rap, and I, I opened the show with gangster rap, and I'm actually closing. I'm going to make some room for, uh, for my brother Ali to come up here. Um, but I just want to kind of leave with this. You know, a lot said about gangster rap. It sounds angry, right? It sounds violent. It sounds like it's causing the problem, but it's not causing the problem. Pay attention to the words. They say rap is hate music. No. Gangster rap, Tupac, Biggie Smalls, and all the OGs, that's love music. Pay attention to it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Speaking of love, and then I'm uh, close with this. In our special month, I want to say something nice to my beautiful girl. I wonder if she's here. Whether you're here or you're not here, you're always here. And I love you. Good night.